Hello, everyone. I'm Harold Mugliotti. And I'm Jeff Blanchard. And this is a very special edition of Tech Down Over. And we're back. And you might have realized that we said Tech Down, there's a very special edition of Tech Down Over. And the reason being is we've got a special guest host with Harold. Yeah. Hello, Harold. How are you this afternoon? Or um, this morning for me? Just lovely. Um, yeah, Rick will be be here with us in photographic form, which you'll, you'll see what mm. that means coming up. <laughs> Uh, yes, but as I said, it's always good when you see the titles, but uh, you always have to explain. We do like to do guest hosts every now and then because it's uh, we don't want to not do the show, but like Harold's been playing around, I think, with the Sony A7R Mark III, have you? Yes, that's one Sony... of the ones you've done, and the, and the Canon 5 DSR. Yeah. Which that, that's your particular camera, isn't it? Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I actually bought this one from uh, Rick not long ago. And um, yeah, this is the 5DSR here. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the A7R 3. And uh, we actually had a short show yesterday where Rick was talking about, you know, as we were testing it, he, t he talked a little bit about um, sort of the differences between the cameras. And um, we've got our Mm -hmm. We've got a bunch of uh, comparison shots here that we actually took that will kind of go over some of the differences between the two cameras. Well, even when before you start looking at that, I'll sort of just say when you had the two cameras up there that the uh, I always have that impression of the A7R Mark II being like a small camera. But yeah. once that's got that uh, battery grip on it, it didn't seem to be too much different to your Canon uh, 5 DSR, and that's quite a, a chunky sort of camera, isn't it? Are they similar in size? Um, what the A7R 3 is actually smaller. Let me show them actually side by side it's here. Nice. Yeah. I've got both of them here, so you can see Oh, that. yeah, but it is quite smaller. But I'll, I thought when you see one by each, you think that... But it is still quite big for the Sony because the previous one was... Uh, I think that was one of the big problems that Rick had because he hasn't got small hands and he could not grab grab hold of the previous Sony. Yeah. Uh, he had to. But with now with that hand with that battery grip, it's uh, uh, perfect because it just really nicely held on that. So yeah, it's good to see. Uh, with the with the ergonomics, I know it's a, a bit hard to ask you which one you like to feel the feel of the best because since you've bought the uh, 5DSR of yeah. course you like that one better yeah and that that's sometimes where when I see a lot of comparisons about the place is uh, when people uh, and especially when the people say oh you can't judge them they've been given that by Canon to review and I actually like that when people are giving them cameras because sometimes when people have spent three four five thousand dollars they're very reluctant to do a video and say it's rubbish, and then people think they've wasted their money on a heap of, <laughs> you know, rubbishy yeah. equipment. So sometimes I, 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 but like Rick has a, has the the comparison of all of them. So I trust them ones when people have a, a combination, and especially with, with, I think we've always said that each camera has a particular reason. Like your five DSR, that does fantastic the stills and if you're blowing them up for a, a a billboard on the side of the freeway that's perfect for that or if you want to go get a big shot but just zoom into a particular part of it to get detail out of that it's excellent and i don't know if did you see the uh uh at uh studio is it studio 13 is it the the uh, video with giovanni is oh it? bistro 13 yeah Bistro 13, not Studio 13. Bistro 13. Yeah, the and video was, came out quite nice. And I'm still blown away with that, that video. I'll just look at that every now and then. I just thought, that is, to me, that was the best color I've ever seen in a video thing. I just really like that. I don't know why, but it just struck me as the colors were just so nice. And, and it just did such a good job. And 
that well, I don't know if that had autofocus on that sh uh, shoot or not, but it never, never sort of wandered on the focus. But let's let let's start have a look at some of your comparisons you did, uh, Harold. Yeah, and um, I, on the note of um, you know which camera I'll be sort of more inclined towards, I think mm -hmm. you you are probably right about that. That you know I bought this one, so I'm going to be a little more <laughs> probably lenient towards it. I I am. Mm -hmm. I remember you mentioning before that sort of the the way you are is you you like to get equipment and then you'll just really get to know it and use it a whole lot and that's kind of me too. I don't tend to buy a lot of different things. I'll get something and mm. I'll I'll just you know spend a lot of time um really get trying to get to know it and just trying to get sort of all I can out of it. And that's what I do. Reason being is because like, you pay a lot of money for this, and you have a thousand and one features. And to me, I feel if I don't you try and at least f use the features it's got, well, that's what I'm paying that top dollar for. I could have bought something a third of the price because yeah. you say, well, I don't, oh, I didn't bother using this. I don't bother using that. Don't bother using that. So, well, why waste your money on on a, on a higher end camera and that? But even if you don't do it all the time, but I'll have to investigate all the all the particular features on on a particular camera yeah so we'll go into these comparisons and actually mm -hmm. as you mentioned the 5dsr is a bit more of um it it tends to do better sort of in a studio setting and on a tripod with a lot of lighting and we're going to start off with ones that are sort of Maybe a little further from that, I, I, I shot these first ones handheld, and I got oh, pretty okay. comparable pictures. Here's a p picture of Rick. Um, this is his photographic appearance that I mentioned earlier. And, um, you know, from this resolution, they don't look too different. You can see difference in colors. I do notice that I had both of these just on sort of the auto white balance because I wanted to mm -hmm. see how they would... Uh, react differently and in general the sony tends to get i think a little richer color it tends to be more on the red side and the canon tends to be a little bluer and um the real difference in this one is um i'll show this zoomed in uh view of these shots and you can see the canon ended up with a lot more shake than the sony and um, a lot of that, I think, is due to the fact that the 5DSR does not have in-body image stabilization. So if you're doing a lot of handheld shooting, you would want to be using a lens, I think, that has um, image stabilization inside the lens. Mm, definitely. Yeah. And even, even like when they say, even when people are shooting on tripods, a lot of people do forget that... <laughs> If you if you just press the shutter, you're still introducing shake a lot of the time. Yeah. you've got to have a, you know make something you know you, you a man, manual clicker thing that you just do it on there rather than physically uh, clicking on the camera. But you could see quite the, the difference on there. But I've Definitely. always sort of noticed the the different the, the, the same as TVs the difference in coloring between Canon and people always say like even Rick I think he loves the Canon coloring and that. It's. It, I, I don't think it's better than the Sony, or Sony's better than the Canon. Sometimes it's just what you like on those shots. I think yes, you like you said it might have been something like the white balance on the Canon, or something if we'd done it manually might have made it slightly different. Different, but as I said, all of them have a have such a a great quality in the picture. It's just a different color scale. And then what's the other one? And Panasonic. Yeah. They go to the sort of the cooler side, don't they? They're sort of the yeah, more bluey type color, the very cool. And the, the Sony's a warm feeling camera, and the Canon's in between both of them, I think, so, to me anyway. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good summary of sort of how their, how their relative color is. Uh, well, actually, let's show another one of these comparisons So while we're talking about the color. Yeah, this is a similar shot to the previous one, I yep. guess. Um, let me go to the zoomed-in view here. And, yeah. And, and as you said, and it's different. One's a bit, you know, looking over on the, from my end, 
because sometimes I get a little, the, the quality of the video coming back might be slightly different, but I think it might be sharper on, on the actual YouTube. But if you say the Sony one, it does look like it's got much more detail uh, uh, detail than the Panasonic. But then again, you never know. It's always the, the way it's taken. It's very, very hard to have the shot taken the same, even with the same settings. Sometimes it, it, with a different camera, it's very hard to do that. But uh, I like the, the colouring a bit better in the, the, the Sony for me. But even then, the, the Canon probably looks more realistic. Would you say that? Um, it depends. Some, I think in these ones, yeah, it, it did come out a little closer to um, sort of what it, what it looked like just by by my eyesight. But I think some of the later ones will see a little a, a little. It's, it, it's funny though how that goes because it's uh, years gone by. Everybody wanted uh, things to be looking natural when. Uh, when color TV first came out, you had this has the most natural color, and Philips used to have the best, n nice, and it was the same thing. Philips had like a real good skin tone. Panasonic was still the same; they had a bluey tone to everything. Yeah, and Sony's had the the the, the warmer warmer style, but they were lighter in colors. And if you had something like we have these the higher saturation colors, where people love these days. It would look ridiculous, and I remember, in, I'm old enough to know that when in color TV got introduced, and you'd go to people's places, and you'd see a face, and it'd be bright orange. Yeah, I've had the color turned right up, but it's strange how it's gone full. Like now, you'll see photos, people want this brilliant blue sky, and even when it's not, when I do a lot of my photography, I try, I just take it as it is. And just adjust slightly. I never adjust the colours. I do that. And so if it is a bright blue, it's that's what it is. Like I did a video the other week showing me doing a bike ride down to to Karam, uh, Karam. and the sky was a lovely blue. But I didn't touch it up. I didn't bring up any highlights or or anything in in that. But uh, and same with those two shots you you had there. That one's got that bit more colour, and the other hasn't. But what do people want to see? Do they want to look see uh, exactly, or do they just want to enhance the quality a bit? And I think we all want to enhance the quality a bit. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because I, I do wonder if perhaps there is a sort of there may be a bit of a general generational aspect to how people the standards of what people want in the mm. in their images because. I, I know that like for myself when I take photographs I pretty much always I'm always messing with things I I adjust colors usually at least just a little bit I adjust contrast in different areas and I do quite a lot of that you know post processing after I take pictures and I'm just wondering if maybe there is a move away from or at least in my like in my generation there might be a move away from the wanting realism and it's it might be more about this sort of wanting something spectacular. I think, and I think that may be in part because, you know, nowadays people, you know, we're always looking at images, but nowadays people are spending more and more time looking at images on screens that almost invariably have been, you know, touched up in some way. They've been modified. They, the colors have been rebalanced. And I just wonder if that's sort of changing the way people think about what they see, you know. <laughs> That's why they get bitterly disappointed when they go on holidays and they go to this lovely beach in Honolulu or wherever and wait to see all the... Hey, it doesn't look like this in the pictures. Hey, it <laughs> might be beautiful and that, but it, it's it's larger than life. Like It's sometimes like this, the science fiction. For, yes, I've got it all there, but you can't recreate that in, in real life. And that's where I think the, the the art of the true photographer. Like I said I don't call myself a true photographer. I, I I dabble around in it, but these people who they could just make the pictures talk, no matter what the scene. Like you can have a ton of noise in the picture, you mm -hmm. can have the white balance off, you can have it out of focus, but they can make it make a picture out of that. And it's just all the composition, and sometimes they they make it like that. But uh, I mean, it's it's such an art that uh, I don't think I think no matter how much you study, you can always learn more. And I just love watching these people who 
know how to handle a camera and, and how to take a shot. Yeah, it it really is impressive because that with with photography, you know, you have to work with what's already in front of you, and you know, it's kind of it's you know, I'm a I do painting and drawing and. I, I think the composition's easier there because if something's not working compositionally, you just don't put it in or you take it out. Mm. Whereas with photography, you always, to some extent, have to work with what's actually there in front of you. And I'm, I'm always a strong believer if you had one of these top photographers submit all these photos and then you ask, then if somebody says, oh, oh what camera did you use? Because they always ask that thinking it's got to be the camera to do it. And if they said it was an iPhone or something like that, because they, it's not all not always the camera. It's a, it's a combination of the camera and the person operating yeah. it that, that makes the big difference. So, did you have any more comparison shots there? Yeah, oh. and speaking of outdoors, uh, here's here's a comparison we ha took of some yeah. trees here, and um, I f I found that these ones, I think because the we had such a high shutter speed. Let me show the zoomed in view here. Because we had such a high shutter speed, I think that kind of eliminated a lot of the, you know, shake difference between the two yes. cameras. We we can see in the the one with the Sony here, so the leaves look a little blurrier, but I don't I, I don't think that's a camera thing. It's I think it's just it was slightly windy and maybe the leaves were getting blown a little bit more. When I took but it's that even, it, it's, it's, it's fun, it's good, that comparison, because that's a bit what I said before about the 5 DSR. When you did the long shot, it was hard to tell. But when you zoomed in, the, the, the Canon really takes a, um, looks much clearer, doesn't it, when you zoom in? So that's one of its benefits with the higher uh, pixel thing for each one. When you zoomed in, it did a better job. So when it zoomed out, it was hard to say, well, I was tossing up which one. But... Looking at that, I'll, I'll prefer the Canon shot on that one. Yeah, and I guess the other thing I noticed is that um, the Canon tends to do better um, when the... For most things, the Canon tends to do better when the um, aperture's closed up a bit, maybe f6, mm. f8, or something like that. But when it's a longer distance like this and it's bright, then it actually doesn't make that much of a difference. Mm, no, but it's interesting. So, so, and how did you did you take two separate shots, or did you have it on a tripod with them mounted together? Um, these ones were just handheld. I, I just had, basically, I just had the uh, the five yeah, DSR one, and then took the other. So. Yeah. And yeah, we'll have to get have to get you a, a double mounted tripod head, so you put both of them on the same tripod, yeah. <laughs> and then send you out and do that with the video cameras and that, <laughs> and one on top of each other. That's right. That's about the closest one, isn't it? So. Yeah. And um, oh, the last last of these comparisons I did was I basically just w one of these studio chairs we have here, uh, like I'm sitting on. I just put the cameras on on a table and just took a picture okay. so the y using timer using a two second timer um i just took these pictures i figured that should eliminate most of the shake and we'll just zoom in on the um kind of the focus area here and oh it seems like to me there these cameras i think are yeah r really comparable once you know once the image stabilization is accounted for and you've got it, you've got them yeah. mounted or something like that, you know. Well, I mean, on that, sh on that shot there, if if the co color was slightly down on the uh, Sony, you wouldn't know it was two photos, would you? No, yeah. It's, um, Cause it's only that slight color different, but the focus, it looks to me like it's identical. It's just... And it's, and if you if you look back and don't think about it, you can't see a color difference. But when you think about it, you can just see that slight color difference, but not much. Yeah. So I think that you know both of these cameras are an excellent choice for you know pixel peepers who like to <laughs> zoom in and see. You know, is this pixel sharp? Is this pixel sharp? Now another one. I don't know if you've tried it, Harold, with the A Seven R Mark three have you tried the pixel shifting i haven't have tried you? that yet um, no what that that one you definitely have to have a tripod but you have to have a really heavy tripod if it's just a thin one 
even the vibration in the tripod makes a difference. So it gets, I think, what, three images and three images. So it'll be three, the maximum, three forty-two megabyte images, I think, and then uh, gets the best out of each one of them and puts them together. But it said it only works on still shots. You can't can't do it on moving anything moving. It's it's got it's no good. But so, uh, I've seen people do it. But they said it's it's really you've got to really make sure you set up and you can't press the shutter with your hand. So because that's too much, that will make the movement on there. So you need to have the electronic uh, button on there. So and I keep hearing different things with the um, the Sony about the mechanical and the electronic shutter. Do you, do you play around with that? I haven't played around with that so much. Wait, so the pixel shifting, then does that combine it to make a higher resolution picture? Or it just takes... Yeah. Interesting. Yes, it takes like the three and puts them together and gets the best out of them. But it's... Uh, I think there might be a bit more to than that, but I've seen that. But it's definitely one that takes a lot of work. It's not meant for a quick action shot. It's meant... When you're taking a picture of a mountain or something that's not going to move but on a still day but it's the or more probably like i suppose monuments or things like that something that doesn't move because if you've got any of the slightest movement in there it doesn't uh, do any good on that why i asked about the shutter is because i can't remember which way it is but they were saying that the mechanical shutter which makes the physical noise does the much better job you can have it as a silent shutter but it lessons of performance and i can't remember what that was on there but uh i thought hey you just have to put up with a click click and yeah. i suppose it's only when you want to to be super duper quiet but in most cases it, you know the only time when you need to be super duper quiet most of the time is when you shouldn't be taking the photo anyway <laughs> <laughs> in most creeper cases, mode that's, like why pe- that's why people want the quiet one and if you do hey the other option is not getting the picture at all so <laughs> if it does drop in quality who cares <laughs> yeah little bit. i think that's what rick would call creeper mode yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we haven't used that too much i i wonder if it's because i know for example for the 5dsr then it has an option to delay the motion of the shutter which is supposed to reduce slight vibration so i wonder if that could be a possible use for it too i'm i'm not sure if that would really be if it would really be useful for that in the sony and i i, I guess i was also thinking the the um, pixel shifting thing that would probably also be useful for i know automotive photographers they tend to want really huge uh, resolutions and you know that is something where if you have a car set up in a studio then you can basically have nothing moving and that that can be something where you'll just have a totally still subject and after that and that's what I, when i first saw the 5 dsr it was showing you know uh, uh, pictures of motorbikes being taken still shots with a model on it mm-hmm. and I, was, I saw one of the first ones i think it was jason lanier i think it was it was in the um uh you know we're not in the drains in los angeles you know the uh what the water what, what's the um uh, in los angeles the um yeah, yeah, there's creeks or whatever the concrete things. It was on there, the but River. taking photos uh, with the with a model yeah. on a on a bike and just the skin tones on that. It was just fantastic. But as you said, there were huge huge files. But I mean, it was uh, uh, a great quality there. And now I've got my eye. Now you we were saying about being stable. Uh, mm-hmm. That thing I was talking about last week, Rick's got to get one of these. Is the 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 Ronin S? Have you seen that? Well, I haven't looked into it a whole lot. Yeah, you were you were talking about that on the you were talking about that the other day. How's that? How's that working out for you? Well, that's what I, it's, it's like, that's the one when I want to have. Uh, it hasn't been released yet, but this oh, is yeah, what it is. Oh yeah, it's not released. This yet. is it. If you can see, that's that's the Ronin S on that so uh, and it's made for sort of like the the sony's and the the canons on that but you can see on that it's got the it's got like a a slant so you don't lose the uh, the back screen because most of those gimbals oh, yeah. are like that that screen's behind that that big chunky bit on that and uh, but this one it's the first one i've seen that's like the osmo that rick's got the osmo as well mm-hmm. but it's one that you can actually use because the other Ronin 
was quite big and awkward to set up. And on that one down, it has feet down the bottom on that that you can put on it. But it does, uh, it can sort of detach and control the camera on certain cameras on there. But it, it detaches from the base, so you can put it onto, uh, you know, a jib, so you oh. can have stable shots onto that. And it's just, you know, a fantastic uh, sort of thing. And I don't know what it's going to, but I built the sort of, I can't see it being much under a thousand dollars. I think it'd probably be round about even more. I'm not too sure whether it'll be that or not, but uh, definitely one of the things I would love to uh, love to get hold of when it when it eventually. Uh, comes out anyway so yeah that'll but, be uh, and uh, with that one with that having that slant you can go from f up to an undershot straight away because it doesn't hit the gimbal whereas normal ones you've got to stop do it upside down and then film it that way whereas this one you can go up with the camera still being right way up by the looks of it whereas if you uh have you had a play with the uh, the osmo the the dji osmo um, I, Rick hasn't had me use um, the Osmo yet, or I haven't really used too much with the used to, the gimbals too much yet. So, I'll, I'll, I've started, I've used the Osmo, and the Osmo has so you can connect to the iPhone or your, your uh, Android phone, so you can see the image. Uh, use that as a viewfinder, but mm -hmm. I find that a bit cumbersome. What I use the Osmo for quite a little bit is just by itself and just point it in the general direction. And when you we need that stability, the only problem with that is all the files that you record are all recorded in the first of January two thousand and fourteen, because oh. that must have been because it it takes the time and date from the phone. So if you don't have the phone connected, it always records them at, uh, oh, okay. at that, that date and time. So there was one other thing I just saw that was a bit funny on the, I think on, I think it was on the A7R Mark III, that every time you put a new card in, it resets the counter. And they said, that's not very good. So you know how you usually say image one and it keeps going until you reset it? Yeah. I was when you change the card, it resets it back to the same one. Maybe huh. put a different, but, but that's what I was saying. I think it was that, that camera. I'm not sure. We haven't come across that yet because we've only been really using one card in this so far. So I guess that's mm. something that will... And usually you don't because when you download, every, most programs put them in the date. So unless you replace it on the same day, yeah, then you get the same file there. But if you do it a different date, it won't make any. Dip, you won't notice. And most of the times with the cards these days, you, you're very hard to fill up. Well, that wasn't the, well, well. On that subject, that'd be good to know. So with the Panasonic, or not Panasonic, with not on them, the Sony. What size memory card did you have in that? Um, let's see. We what have it right now. We've got a. 128. Oh, okay. And have have you maxed that out yet, or did you? How did you find going? What what sort of, uh, say, t length of video could you do on that? Um, I haven't done that much video on here, and I don't think Rick has either. So we haven't filled up very much of the card. That that actually might be a good test to see. Just click it and do the 30 minutes. Stop. Click it again. See how how many 30 minutes because that one the Sony you can only do the 30 minutes that's correct right. isn't it yeah that one's yeah. a 30 but minute it might be interesting just to see how much because they say oh you're on 129 you could roughly get a you know uh, uh, 20 gigs an hour or whatever I don't know what it is with the high quality but it'd be good to see how many photos you could max it out from what they do do say it is as well but uh, yeah, but 129. That's quite a, a decent one, uh, decent size card to have in that, and, and that's and that's what you want, I think, for the video as well as, you, as uh, the still shots. Yeah, and it's got two card slots, but I think Rick said that one of the slots is a slower one. We've got it right now in the faster slot, but it's mm. yeah, one of them. Uh, yeah, and, and and I think it's, I I think the top ones. The top one's the B one, and the bottom one's the A one, and the bottom one's the fast one. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct, actually. I may as well <laughs> show then, it here on the shot. And, and they said that's quite silly because one of, the feet, one of the reasons you have twin slots, one of the reasons you have twin slots for is uh, 
So you put two cards in there, and you do a record on both of them. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the the slower one is the the slower slot is the B slot, which is at the top, and yeah. then the faster one is the A slot, which is at the uh, bottom here. And I just can't understand why why they would do that because when the most like I said what most people want with that is the two slots so they can uh, record to both so if they're doing video or photo mm -hmm. record it to both cards so they've got a backup of that and if you're doing a, a big what's that 12 frames a second a big burst of that then while it's writing to the card if you're doing a dual one okay there might be five what if it's doing that might be a five second lag uh, yeah, it'll finish up, with the, the recording to the cat. But when it's got that dual one, it can be thirty seconds because it's got it's got the two loads and it's got you know twice as much. So it's slowing you down. So people will stop doing that. But I just yeah. think that's quite crazy. Why in a like? Hey, I could understand if it was a fifteen hundred dollar camera. Hey, you, you get what you get. You've got to live with that. But it's a, it's a top end camera. It's not like here. What just that camera? It's if for a, that and a, uh, a twelve to one hundred five millimeter. Is it, no, twenty four to one hundred five millimeter lens. I've priced it here. It's about, uh, about seven thousand three hundred. So Oof. it's not your not your uh, entry point camera. So you, it's just a bit disappointing for just that bit anyway. But at least they've got two. They didn't have them before, and the battery, the fixer battery, and it's. Uh, uh, got quite a good running time, so you can't have everything. And I'm sure that's why they do these things, because they've got to keep you wanting. So when they yeah. do release one with that, oh, they'll go for that anyway. So yeah, this year we do have that. You know, you, we know you just bought this full frame camera, but we just added the feature that you were asking for. <laughs> that's right. Yes, yeah, yeah. and and a lot of the things these days with the cameras a lot of the things they can do in firmware but they don't because <laughs> i'm sure if they did people would just be they'd have one camera like really i've got a canon 60d and that's still perfectly good that's no that's over yeah. for, for, for over five years at all nothing wrong with that and hey no matter what the tech it's still quite good videos video is good on it but the only thing it's horrible to use because you can't use autofocus on it because once you fo once you start recording, that stops, <laughs> and oh. then you can't adjust anything yeah. while it's recording. So you've got to stop again, redo it again, and and then the colors. That it's it's very good if you're in a studio and want to just set it up and use it manually. Not a problem, but uh, it, that's where the 80D sort of uh, started taking over from a lot of things and, and making things that much better. But I'm still tossing up i think with the price difference i might still end up going for a gh5 eventually because yeah. one of the things i like with the because i want it more for video i know the sony will probably will do a better quality but one of the things that you like with a video camera is you want to be able to do an unlimited record yeah and because most of the things you might stick it on a tripod hey you only want five minutes but you've got to record for a whole hour or two and if you put that on the on a stand well, you can't do that is you have to keep going back and pressing stop and mm -hmm. then press the record again and yeah the the gh5 as we've shown in our tests it does a really good job with with uh video and the Autofocus, it's gotten a lot better since since their firmware update. It's mm. it's still not necessarily perfect in cer certain respects. Best, no. I think that the Sony was faster in in um, tracking the face and and a little better keeping it. But after the, I think it's called firmware two update, then the GH five is really good. Yeah, well, and, and I've still got like the FZ one thousand, which Rick's got there. The FZ. 2500 with the 2500 is the, re, the, re, the update on mine but i'm still using that and i'm still blown away with the quality of that and i thought then the uh, the gh5 is a step up from that and the only thing i don't like with my fz 1000 because it's one of those bridge cameras every time you, you know you switch on the lens comes popping out not a bad lens and does a good job but i want if i get something like the uh, dgi uh, Ronin S, that was not very suitable for that because yes, it balances, yeah. but if you don't use it for a moment, 
then the lens goes eep, and zooms back in. <laughs> and so if you're not filmed, or, or then if you're adjusting it, it, then it unbalances itself. So you have to open it up and then you'd have to balance it. Then it would probably get a bit awkward. So I want to have something that's got the the fixed lens on it. But uh, the Panasonic's not a cheap camera. But when you look at uh, $3,500, and when then you look at seven thousand three hundred, it makes it look cheap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I mean, it's not a cheap camera either, and it's a great quality. But to me, I'm starting to think that might be the I could I can justify that one, but not twice as much. Uh, uh, I'd love to have a because I haven't never had a full frame camera, but I'd love to have one. But hey, maybe we'll do the A seven R Mark IV, and then I'll be able to afford the three. But then, as as Rick and I always say. That doesn't work, even if they made that one, you know, half price or just at fifteen hundred. I'd have to have the next one because I'd be missing out yeah, on all exactly. new features, of the new ones. So they always get you. There's the you can never yeah. wait, never like. There's the A7R Mark II, and they say, oh, you can get that. There's not much difference. It's only this. Yeah, but the main difference is like the battery and the overheating is a reason to, you know, if you're, and they're not throwing them away either. It might be $1,000 cheaper, but it still is a down well expensive camera. So I'll, if I'm going to spend $6,000, i will spend $7,000 on yeah, the exactly. latest. <laughs> but uh, I don't think I'll be spending that much on this one just this moment anyway. Mm hmm. All right. Well, I think we're at about the end of our time for today. Oh, we've done more. We've done about 40 minutes. We've gone over time because we usually <laughs> like to stick it to 30 minutes, but yeah. we have. So thanks for the chat, Harold. It's been very Thank you, good. Jeff. So I hope I can see you get some more more uh, things on the uh, the equipment Rick's got it there and more on your 5 DSR. Come back another time with some video and, and see what... Yeah, I haven't really tried the video out. on this yet, so I'll see how that works out i mean like you said i was pretty impressed with the video that rick did at B of uh giovanni at bistro 13 and mm. i'll see what i can get out of it I, I on my own i don't do too much video in general but i'll yeah you know, i'll definitely try it out mm. okay all right well that's uh it for today thank you everyone uh have a good one this has yeah, been. Thanks for what? Thanks for watching. Bye for now.